In the last video, we fixed up a Game Boy Emerald for a customer that sent in three SP consoles and a game. It looks like they've all had basically trace damage and poor soldering that's ended up in ripping traces. So these are the three boards in question. We have labels from the customer letting us know what's wrong. So no charge light and pads gone. And I guess we'll have to look around where the pads are missing on this one. This is no charger port and it's got a USB port dangling off. This is really common, so this customer is not alone. We get these in all the time where people attempt these USB-C mods and partly because of, I'd say, poor design choices and partly due to difficulty, these pads all get torn here. So we'll restore that one. And there's also solder pads missing. So that should just be basically that port. And finally, this third one, there's no LEDs or charge light and no trigger pads. So the customer's attempted to swap a trigger here and looks like damaged some traces. Let's first start by trying to get these to power up and work, and then we'll deal with things like the trace damage. So let's start with this one. No charge LED pads gone. I've just taped a battery to it. And if we turn on, we can see the Game Boy works, so that's not an issue. We've got red light just because this battery's low. So the way we're gonna test this charge circuit is on the battery. I haven't got a battery installed. We now hooked up an electronic load. And I've got it set to constant voltage mode, so CV, and I've told it to monitor for four volts. What this will do is pull and act like a load on here while maintaining four volts on the input. What we can then do is inject five volts here, which is the charge point, and monitor for this, what would be the battery, receiving the actual charge. I've got the bench set up to five volts. So if we use this now to inject five volts onto this charge pad, we can see there's nearly 300 milliamps going out of the five volt input, which would be the charger. And if we take a look at the electronic load, we can see that is receiving all of that power, basically bar 10 milliamps. So that can confirm that the battery would be receiving this charge. And if we look here, this is where the charge LED should be. And it looks like it's just missing the actual LED pad. So it should be a simple case of restoring this and chucking an orange LED on, and this should be good. For the right side pad, I've just used some copper tape, cut it down, soldered it to both sides of where the trace originally was, and left some copper exposed to solder the LED to. The other side, the trace is still there, so now I just need to chuck the LED on. Now with the battery held in place, if we just inject 5 volts down here, we can see we get the charge light. Now let's try the customer's USB-C port. And nothing. So there's an issue from here. Let's just track that down. So the most common fault on the charge circuit is the fuse or the EM filter. So the pause is fine. And the ground is dead. You can just take this off and bridge both pieces. There's no need in this filter. Just make sure to aim the hot air up here, nowhere near this LCD connector. And the radial heat will flow backwards so that you can remove this port. With that off, we'll just now bridge those two pins and the top two pins. And with that bridged, let's now insert the USB-C again. And just as we insert it, if we look for that light, it should flash. And nothing. So let's just measure here. So 5 volts is making it to that side of the fuse. And nothing that side. So that's a blown fuse. So that's a new fuse on. Now let's try inserting the USB. And there we go. So finally, let's just try and hold the battery in position. And console's on. And console's now charging. So that's that one fixed. Next up, let's tackle this one. So there's no LEDs on the charger and no R pad. So basically, the right trigger here is missing pads. And just like the last one, these two LEDs, or all three to be honest, are all missing LEDs. So that's no different than the last one. Just trace repair to solder all these on. There's nothing new there. And that's everything restored there. We have the new LED on. Well, all three new LEDs on. The trigger has had the trace repaired to there and all the ground pads restored. So now we have a functional replacement trigger. The customer didn't mention, but the power switch has disappeared as well. And with a new power switch on, let's now see if the LEDs work and the charge circuit. 
can see as we turn on and off the red flashes and the greens on so we know both of those are good let's insert a charge cable now we can see there's the charge and we can turn on and it remains charging so that's the second one fixed we'll do a full qc to make sure the button and everything else works and now the last one this says there's no charger port solder pads which we can see quite easily it's all been torn off customers soldered to the wrong test points there for start with and the wrong pads on there so let's just remove this and figure out what we're going to do with these pads now we have two options with this really we can restore these physical copper pads by running traces from say underneath to this area and then soldering when we put this back down to the fresh pads but because this wants to stay really flat and there's loads to restore what I'm going to do is just solder this in place first with the two ground pads, which still exist on the outer edges. And then we're just going to fly and lead wire repair all of these traces to where they go. Using a combination of the schematics and the board scans I've done that are on Retro6.wiki, we can easily just zoom in and see this area here. Zoom in on the other side of the board, which is mirrored just for simplicity of following traces. And we can follow here and here to figure out where to wire to and just before we place that down i've just put some uv solder mask over here so it's actually covering all those exposed pins it's a very thin layer so you can hardly see but that'll stop any shorts happening and with that now on and the two pads soldered that are there we need to fix the other four whilst doing that though i've noticed the customers also messed up some of these pins so let me just reflow that as well We'll just apply some flux and reflow all of these CPU pins. That's them pins all nice and clean. So the last step now is to add the four flying leads on here. And that's all the traces restored and everything nice and clean. Let's see if this works. And there we go, charge lights on, and consoles on. So that's three for three. So that's three SP boards and a Pokemon Emerald all working and heading back to the customer. If you guys want me to repair your attempted work, just book it in under a repair, and I'm sure I can sort it for you.